Hi, I'm Krista with The Big Family Homestead, and today I'm going to show you how to make the best blueberry jam. Now the difference between jam and jelly, you may ask, well jam, you use all of the pulp from the fruit. Where jelly, you're just using the juice from the fruit. Who wants to waste all that pulp? I love having all that pulp in my jam. Just makes it taste so much better. Now, let's get to our ingredients. Now what you'll need to make blueberry jam is 12 pints of blueberries. Crushed up, it makes 13 cups of pulp, nine cups of sugar, two packages of Sure Gel Low Sugar Pectin, and a splash of lemon juice. Now this recipe will make about nine pints of jam. Now what I've already done here is I have run all of the blueberries through this fantastic device. This has crushed them up and it also has separated out the skins and the stems. And there will also be links down below for all of the products that we're talking about today. Now the first thing you need to do is wash your jars with soap and water and then you're going to put them into a pot and bring it to a boil and boil it for about 10 to 15 minutes because you're going to be water bathing these jars instead of doing a pressure canning. Uh, pressure canning, you don't really need to sterilize your jars but for water bath you definitely need to sterilize your jars. Now for the jars, I like to use the either Kerr or Ball, but the mason jars. I like the wide mouth so that you can get all of the jam out very easily. Uh, they come with lids and rings, uh, which makes it really, really easy. So today we're actually using the Kerr jars. Now one tip is, okay, you have to start with a warm water because if you get this water boiling hot and then you put a cold jar in there, it's going to shatter and there could somebody could get hurt. So warm water, cold jar, then bring this up to boiling. Now the water is going to need to be above the jar, so I will have to add some water to this. All right, here's a quick little tip on how you keep your jars from getting cloudy. When you have hard water, that hardness attaches to the outside of the jar and it just looks unattractive. So I'm gonna throw a splash of vinegar in here so that it keeps that from uh, being cloudy. All right, so now I, in a separate pot, I'm going to go ahead and put the lids in here to boil those because they too need to be sterilized. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a splash of lemon juice in here. And the reason for the lemon juice is so that the fruit doesn't change color. Some fruit will turn really brown. This way we keep our brilliant blue purpley color. Just mix that in. All right, so now with every uh, box of pectin, the instructions, for lots of different jams and jellies come with it. That is fantastic, I love that. So for this specific recipe, we need one pa uh, two packages of the Sure Gel um, mix, pectin, not mix. And with this, we will mix in one quarter cup of sugar for each box and then combine that. Then we're going to add that to our cold blueberry puree. Now the rest of our sugar will come into play in a little while, but for right now we're gonna go ahead and put our pectin and our quarter cup of sugar into the, the pot and get that mixed in. Now that is a quarter cup per box, equaling half a cup of sugar. Now all we're trying to do here is get it completely incorporated so there's no clumps. Now while our jars and lids are st being sterilized, we're gonna go ahead and get our mixture, our blueberry mixture, heated up to boiling. All right, now we have our blueberry puree boiling, and so what we're gonna do is we'll give it a quick stir, and then we're gonna scrape off the foam. Now we're going to go ahead and add the remaining sugar, get that in there, stir it around, dissolve it, and bring it back up to a boil for a whole minute. Now 
Now I've seen recipes where you put a, just a tab, a little bit of butter in here to re reduce the amount of foaming. I personally have done both and I don't see much of a difference. Now it's important to remember that anything that's touching your jam also needs to be sterilized. So your ladle and your canning funnel need to be sterilized too. Now getting your jars ready to go, these are done being sterilized so I'm going to very carefully grab each jar uh, with these jar grabber things, I can't remember the name of them, um, and very carefully pour out the water into the pot so that I don't burn myself. And then place it over here on this drying mat. So now I have to work kind of quickly to put the hot jam into hot jars. If I take too many jars out at once, then they cool off too quickly. And you gotta leave a little bit of head space, not too much, about a half an inch for expansion. This jar grabber thing, can't remember what the name of it is, is really great. I love the rubberized, the thick rubberized um, handle and edges here. It really holds the jars tight. The ones that come with the kit are not really worth anything. So this, this one is fantastic. This is what I'm talking about, headspace. You've got about half an inch from the top here to the top of your fruit. Now what I'll do is I will take a wash rag with uh, some vinegar on it and go ahead and wipe the edges so that way it's got a clean edge and it will seal properly. And this will not affect the taste of your fruit in any way. It just cleans the edge really, really well. Now we'll go ahead and take our magnet gadget and uh, pick up one of these lids and gently place it on top of each jar. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the rings on each jar and being very careful not to, well one, burn myself, but not to over tighten. You only want it to do, want to tighten it finger tight. You don't want to crank down on it because that's a mistake we've made before and the jar has actually shattered. So just, just a little bit tight like that, that way your, your uh, fruit doesn't boil out. So now we're going to go ahead and put these jars into our water bath, and, which is just basically the boiling water we sterilize these jars in. And we're going to uh, boil those for at least 10 minutes. For us up here, we are um, above 3,000 feet above sea level, so we have to process them for 15 minutes. Now one note, these the water needs to be at least above, about two inches above the tops of the jars. All right, now this is an important note I forgot to mention earlier. Ha Traditionally, you would use a water bath canner. I don't have one of those because the rack that was inside it rusted and I hated having the rustiness on my jars. So I just decided to get rid of it and use the pressure canner without the lid. It's the same kind of thing. However, you do need to make sure that you put this little thing on the bottom of your pot because you can't have those jars touching the bottom of the pot, directly touching the heat. This kind of helps to insulate that from that direct heat underneath. Right. We've waited our time, now our jars are ready to come out. Be careful because this is boiling water. Tip it just a little bit just to get that water off and set it on this drying mat or towel or rack, whichever you prefer. And let that sit there until completely cooled. At least 24 hours is what it says in the directions. All right, it made 10 pints and all that needs to happen now is nothing. Don't touch it. It will be fine. What's happening as it cools, these lids will seal and they make a little popping sound. That's my favorite sound ever. So they pop when it's sealed. And if they don't pop, 
reprocess, no, don't reprocess them. Put them in the refrigerator because otherwise it'll go bad and you don't want that. So these are done. Just let them sit. I'm Christy with the Big Family Homestead and you have an amazing day.